practice 9.5. Um, find the sine of j, the sine of k, then the cosine of j, and the cosine of k. All right, so first, let's look from this perspective. So if I'm looking from that, I'm at um, angle j, so I'm looking for the sine of j. So I'm thinking Sokotoa opposite over hypotenuse. I want the opposite over the hypotenuse. Well, from that perspective, opposite is 12, hypotenuse is 13. Hypotenuse is 13, no matter where you are. Make sure that's reduced. It is. Good to go there. So um, the sine of, well, actually, let's do the cosine of J. So I'll do these two in red, and then because I'm already over there. Why not? So the cosine of J, I'm going to do adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent there, 5 would be the leg that's next to me, so 5 over 13, and then that's reduced. Okay, and I'll use pencil to do my work from K, so from this perspective. So sine of K is going to be opposite. I'll just put O and H for opposite and hypotenuse. From here, opposite is 5, hypotenuse is 13. And then, whoops. Cosine of K, I want adjacent over hypotenuse. So from down here, adjacent would be 12, hypotenuse is 13. Okay, so there we go for the first one. Okay, those are all reduced already, so we're good to go. All right, next up, write the expression in terms of sine or cosine. So you might notice that we can look at this. Um, if you look at, if you go from, if you compare these two, they're the same. They're both 12 um, over 13. And so if I go from the sine of one angle to the cosine of the other, um, the other acute angle, it's going to be the same. And same here. These two are the same because I went from J to K and I switched from cosine to sine. Okay. And also in a right angle, the two acute angles are always going to be complementary because I got 90 degrees and the other 90 degrees is made up by the two acute angles. So all I need to do is um, to write this in terms of cosine, first right, cosine, but then I'm going to take the, the complement of 22. So I just need to do a little, little. you can do this in your head, but I'm thinking 90 minus 22, that's going to give me um, uh, 68, right? So the cosine of 68 degrees is going to be equivalent to the sine of 22 degrees because those are complements, okay? And you can even test them out on a, on a calculator if you're not sure, or if, oops, I put in the wrong one. If, if uh, it's a multiple choice question, I mean, I want you to understand what's going on, but you could just test out your, your uh, options and see which ones are equal. Okay, so those, those do work. So on all of these, I'm going to switch to the other. I'm going to switch from sine to cosine, whichever one it's not, and then I'm just going to look for the, the complement. Okay, so thinking 90 minus 56, um, that's going to give me 34 degrees. Okay, and all of these you can test on a calculator. Complement of 15, I'm thinking 90 minus 15, that would be 75. And then 90 minus 37 is going to be 53 degrees. Don't forget the degree symbol in all of these because if you don't put it in, then you wrote an angle in radians and you don't want that. All right. Also, in your calculator, when I did these, make sure you're in the right mode. So find the mode and make sure you're in degree. If, I mean, you can just leave it once you got it, and it won't change, but you need to be in degree mode. Okay, so next up, um, find the value of each variable using sine and cosine. Okay. All right, so I want to find, let's find A first. So I want to be at the acute angle that is marked. So I want to be right here. So when I'm looking at Say I want A, well, A is the opposite here, and then I'll use the, the um, hypotenuse because I know what that is. So I want to use sine, right? So I'm going to say the sine of 36 degrees equals A over 25, okay? And then to, to, uh, to get the A by itself, I'll just multiply both sides by 25. So A is going to equal 25 times sine 36 degrees 
put that into my calculator. You might need to do sine 36 first and then multiply by 25, depending on your calculator. And it's once to the nearest tenth, so 14.7. Okay, and then if I'm going for B, then I'd want to use the adjacent in the hypotenuse, right? Even though we know what this is, just in case I made a mistake on A, I can, I'll use the B and the 25. So adjacent and hypotenuse, that would be cosine. So I'm going to do cosine, it's a different color just to make it clear. Cosine of 36 degrees is going to equal B over, I'm just going to do uppercase B so it doesn't look like a 6. And then I'll multiply by 25 on both sides. So B will equal 25 cosine 36 degrees, which is about 20.2. Okay, let's try number eight. Separate this here. Okay, so from the, I'm going to be down here. Okay, so for X, I'm using adjacent and hypotenuse. So I'm going to say adjacent and hypotenuse, that's cosine. Cosine of 43 degrees will equal x over 25. I multiply both sides by 25. Twenty-five cosine 43 degrees is about 18.3. Okay, and I'll do the calculation for y up above there because I'm out of space. So for y, I'd use opposite in hypotenuse. That means sine. Sine of 43 degrees equals y over 25. Multiply both sides by 25. Twenty-five sine 43 degrees is about 17.0. I'm going to the nearest tenth there, so that's closer to 7.0 than the 7.1, right? Okay. All right, next up, down here at this acute angle. So for S, I'm going to use opposite and adjacent. Oh, that's tangent. How about that? Tangent of 20 degrees is S over 117. Multiply both sides by 117. And I've got 42.6. Okay, and then for the R, I'm using the adjacent and the hypotenuse. Adjacent and hypotenuse, that's tan, uh, cosine. So katoa is the ka part of so That'll be 117 over R. Okay, and this hasn't happened yet, but I want to use incredible switch here. If I multiply both, I could multiply both sides by R, but then I'd still have some work to isolate R. So it's a little shortcut, and the variables on bottom like that, I'm just going to switch those two positions. Okay, and then I'll put that into my calculator. And I got 124.5. None of these are in degrees because these are the measures of sides, right? They're not in the measures of angles. So why would I put degrees? Not going to do it. Okay, got an interesting question here. Which statement cannot be true? Well, how, how should I know what the sine of that angle is if I don't know the side lengths? Well, you can figure this out if you think about what sine actually means. Okay, so when I'm looking for the sine of angle A, I'm going to be down here, right? And the sine of angle A is going to be the opposite leg over the hypotenuse. Okay. Now, here's the deal. The hypotenuse is right here, right? And the hypotenuse is always going to be the longest side in that triangle. It's across from the largest angle for sure, right? So it's going to be the largest side. So if I'm taking the opposite over here, I know the opposite has to be less than the hypotenuse. 
Okay, so even though I don't know what the opposite and hypotenuse are, I know that the hypotenuse is more than the opposite. So when I make a fraction out of this, the number on top is going to have to be smaller than the number on bottom. Okay, so hey, this one works, right? So they're asking which cannot be true. So this one can be true, right? So I'll cross that off my list. Now you could write this as 5 over 10, right? Or 1 half. So this one works, okay? And this one, um, you could also write that as a, as a fraction, 9962 over one, um, 100,000, right? So um, the, this one will actually work too. The one that doesn't work is this one because you've got a number more than one, right? So if the, in your fraction, if the number on top was bigger, then you get a number more than one, like Four thirds, for example, would be one and one third, or five fourths would be one point two five, right? So, um, yeah, you can't have an uh, anytime you're taking a sine, actually, or a cosine, you're not going to get a number more than one because um, that would mean your hypotenuse would be less than one of your legs, and that's just not going to work. Okay, um, so hypotenuse, you can explain that in your own words, but the hypotenuse must be greater than the legs, um, well, than the opposite leg in this case. Okay, you could do some sort of an explanation like that. I don't have too much space here, but hopefully that made sense. Okay, and then um, last but not least, we've got this, um, the angle of depression is 11 degrees from the bottom of the boat to a deep sea diver. So think about the uh, someone in the boat looking straight forward, and then they look down um, at an 11 degree angle at the diver. So there is my angle of depression. It's not right there where a lot of people are going to put it. You got to think about looking straight forward and then gazing down. That's the angle of depression. Okay. Um, all right. It says the depth here is 120 feet. What are we trying to find? Find the distance x the diver must swim up to the boat to the nearest foot. Oh, well, x is, so that's a weird way of putting it um, in the writing there, but in the diagram, it's clear they mean what's the length of this line, okay? So now we can find that. I, I kind of would rather, the where I put the 11, I'd rather put the x right here so it's not inside the triangle, but it doesn't matter, okay? So I'm looking at this triangle. And it's a right triangle, so I can use um, Sokotoa. So I'm just thinking, okay, from if I'm right here, where at the 11 degree angle, I'm using opposite and hypotenuse, so I'd want to use sine, right? So sine of 11 degrees and equal 120 over x. This would be a good time for the incredible switch because I got the variable in the denominator. Then I am ready for my calculator, which is not on the screen anymore. Let me get, bring it back. 120 over sine of 11 degrees is about 628.9, and they wanted this to the nearest foot. So I'll round that to 629 feet, approximately. And that is the practice assignment. See you next time.